Hello guys, I am Ollie and we are back here at the Bro Group Stadium for episode 6 of the O Show. Let's see what today's got in store. Here I am on the pitch at the Brea Group Stadium and I'm in the very six yard box where Macaulay Bond and Matt Harold scored goals to win 3-0 against Solly Holmores on Tuesday night and Charlie Lee scored the third of the night in the goal just down there. So, Nathan Harrison, you asked no more shorts and you got your wish and now we've got a great episode in store for you today. We'll be chatting with Keetan Patel, finding out about what he does at the club and also chatting to Miles Judd and Josh Cromer, finding out a bit more about the teams. Let's get cracking. that time of the week again where we have a look at your social media and see what you've been saying about the week at Orient. And after Tuesday night's win against Solly Moors, we posted this photo of the boys celebrating and we said another wonderful night in E10. It really was a wonderful night. And we said let us know your thoughts below and the best will be read out in the next episode of The O Show. And our supporter liaison officer Karen Harrison was straight in there. She said really great to see the team keep pushing for a goal fest rather than settling for a win like in times gone by. The vibe this squad gives off feels really special. It gives me goosebumps when I think what they've achieved and plenty more to come. And I've got to say, Karen, completely agree with you. It's great to see an Orient side that are really going for it, really pushing, scoring lots of goals. I'm enjoying our time at Brisbane Road at the moment. And next we have at David Megix. I hope I've said that right. Sorry if I haven't, David. But he says, good times look to finally be coming back to the Brea Group Stadium. Keep faith and keep this unbeaten run going. In Justin, we trust up the O's and it is fair to say there really is a feel good factor about the club and you can feel it on a match day and I'm sure the players can too. And the last tweet in this section at Parks J, Jason Parks says confidence tick, effort tick, skill tick, togetherness tick. A late in Orient FC team to be proud of and everyone is proud. A lot of ticks there and it was great to get another three points and another clean sheet. Don't forget Still time for you to pick up a season ticket. Let's try and hit that 4,000 mark. Let's chain up. Uh, probably Joby. Joby, Joby. Dates. Dates has a, a good session or we can have a terrible one. Yeah, so he's not best in, is he, mate? No, but he, when, he, when, he has his, when he has a good one, though, he's sick. <laughs> yeah, then he's not best if he's not consistent. He has, he's, had, he's had one bad one the last two weeks, but apart from that, he's been good. Yeah, cool. I'm saying Lawless. Uh, it's that 8 out of 10, Shadrach. Yeah, yeah. Sarge is down there. That hard Sarge is down there getting dinked all the time. Yeah, Sarge is down there. Sarge, but Shad, what would you say, Shad? Yeah, Shad. Shadrach. Um, Just because he thinks he's so good. And he so scores good. own goals in small sizes. He sadness. scored a few own goals in training. He just thinks he's so good. So and call himself an 8 out of 10 for that. Charlie Granger. Uh, nah, is if you can't vote yourself, I say Charlie Granger. Wait, <laughs> hey, get this top out. Get that top out. Nah, nah, they don't have to see that. Uh, Charlie Granger, hundred percent. Sarge, Sam Sarge wears a Kenzo top, <laughs> ripped jeans, and lubes every time he goes out or um, a tournament. Yeah, literally, he's got about two outfits in his so wardrobe. Sarge, so. Sarge is the worst dressed man. Fuck. I'm a, a good dirty wine That's your view, man. No, best dancer. No, I'll take, I'll take that back. No, just, 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 but it's alright. Yeah. yeah. 
Sarge. 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 Sarge is you the think stiffest she's good. character he tries, I've he ever seen. He tries seen. copying Josh all the time, like he's dancing, but yeah. yeah. He ain't got it. You weren't impressed with half of the celebration the other day. Mm, the end bit was a bit stiff from it. Yeah. Well, I tell you, Chaz, Chaz Lee thinks he, no, Chaz Lee thinks he's intelligent. He comes out of some random like stuff. facts that no one actually yeah, cares like, about. But. He thinks he's intelligent, but there's no one really proper clever. Yeah, there's no one. Uh, maybe Chaz Lee might because he comes out of just random stuff. No, I'm not having yeah. at least. I'm not having at least intelligent. Yeah, Charlie Granger, I'm smarter than. Nah, yeah. I am, because he, yeah, he can't even spell like... Uh, I he said something the other day. Cause <laughs> nah, least intelligent, there's only one. No, no it's not, it ain't me. It's hardly going to. So all the stories that have been said about No, you. people over-exaggerate the story so much that some, some people like and over-exaggerate stories. <laughs> some great stuff there from Juddy and Karoma. And now we have Keita and Patel waiting inside and we're going to hear a little bit more about what he does at the club. Let's see what he's got to say. And here we are in the Orient Medical Room with head physio Keetan Patel. Keetan, lovely to have you with us. Yeah, likewise. How are you? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Excellent. Um, so basically, just for the people at home, you're the head physio. What does that entail? What's your day-to-day? -day um, so my day-to-day -day role is to just ensure that the players are, are fit and ready to, to train and to ensure that they're at their, they've got optimal levels of you know, um, readiness in order for match day. I've got a great team around me like Michael Obamoa, who's our first team sports scientist, who also does, um, so he looks after the players um, on the on pitch side and also in the gym. He's then assisted by um, Emma. Emma's yeah. our, again, a sports scientist, and she works with Mike, but predominantly, um, obviously, GPS based. Um, so she does a lot of our reports. Um, so that's uh, like, um, training reports, match day reports, as well as also re rehabilitation reports as well. Um, we've got Melvin. Melvin came in last year at the same time I did. He uh, he assists me, so he's again just another pair of hands in the treatment room, but but very competent. Um, we've got Carl, Carl um, our, our doc, as well as Craig. Both great great docs. Um, Craig's obviously uh, is more is uh, is is with us pretty much week in week out and yeah, um, yeah so uh, we've got a, a pretty good team around us um, and pretty also good team as well. oh it is it is actually and um, you know we've got we've had some fabulous interns over the last uh, over the last year as well who've um, you know who've actually helped the team massively so so there's a lot of people there working behind the scenes some of the names you can't even but you can't even remember them all <laughs> yeah no, I, I can't um, and especially there's um, that, you know we've had um, we've had quite a few interns last year and obviously they've moved on to on to new things and um, and we've had a couple of new interns this year so yeah oh. so far they've you know everyone's had a, a massive uh, a massive impact in obviously with with where we are so yeah because you, you are you're, you're on the on in the dugout of a match day yeah. on a Tuesday or a Saturday what, what does that involve what, what you're doing there well we actually on a, on a match day we actually get here probably like probably which no one sees we, we're normally here sort of like maybe two and a half, three hours earlier. So I get here early to obviously ensure that my medical set or in terms of our equipment is, uh, is, is all, is all ticked up, is checked and, yeah. and all ready to go. We have obviously Mike, Emma, Mike and Mel who ensure that the players, they, they complete certain questionnaires with the players. We've got, um, you know, like drinks, bottles, protein shake, yeah. protein, um, supplements, etc. All of that's all kind of prepared for after the game, for for during and after the game, and um, yeah. So there's a, during a match day, there's there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. But my main role is to ensure is to, is to ensure that if any players get injured on the pitch, then I have to make that call in terms of whether they're a, whether they're able to carry on or, yeah. or or you know or or whether they need to come off and um, and yeah. It's quite a lot of responsibility. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah well, there's, especially now, there's, there's massive responsibility because you know there's there's loads of now rules and regulations in place with regards to like concussion and head injuries. Head injuries, injuries yeah. yeah. So and also like cardiac arrest, etc. You yeah. know, where there's been obviously some uh, fatalities just uh, over the last you know sort of like last decade or so. Yeah. So we've just have to just kind of pretty much be 
on top of any particular, or we just need to prepare for any any event as such. So a much more important role than most probably first imagined. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like especially at, at this level because um, as, as far as I'm aware, the, the, the National League, you don't have to be a physiotherapist yeah. to actually um, to take on a role of, of head of head physio or head sport therapist. So. I think we're, 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 there's only a few clubs within this league that have actually got a head physio or yeah. that have actually employed physiotherapists as part of their, their, you know, as part of their team. Okay, and you work pretty close with them, with the squad, then with the players. T- talk to us about your relationship there. Do you? Yeah, I, I'd like to say that not just myself, but the, the whole medical team have got a great relationship with um, with the players. Uh, Obviously, Mike and Emma have been here for a number of years, so they've actually had had a greater bond with the players. So, yeah. especially a number of players have actually come through the academy. So, yeah. people like Juddy, Karoma, etc. So, you know, so they're they're my eyes and ears as such. You yeah. know, so I listen to them as much as um, as much as they listen to me. So, yeah. Nice. And and touching on the on the first team squad, there's a few injuries at the moment. You've got mm. George Alcobi out with a hamstring. Yeah, so we've got yeah. Is uh, it Brophy out with a yeah, similar, hamstring as well? Yeah, so we've got um two hamstring injuries at the moment. And um we've got Sam who's just out uh, with an ankle sprain, but they're both um all in fact all three are progressing really nicely. Um hopefully Sam may be back for this weekend. Okay. And then we're hoping for Brophy to come back for next week and then George the week after, so no, pretty much um, everyone's all on track, which is good. And a pretty fit squad because um, we've scored a lot of late goals this season. We've blown a lot of teams away later on in the games after yeah. that 75 80 minute mark. I don't know, I think it's something like eight out of 14 goals have been scored after 75 minutes. Yeah, is that fitness down to you and your team at all? Or? Yeah, I definitely I'd like to say so. I'd say that with, with I wouldn't say we've played, we've contributed as such, and I think that, or I feel that. Both Mike and Emma have have been a massive part of that. So mm. given that the given that we've had a really good fitness, a really good pre-season, and I think that helped doing like two to three sessions a day yeah. um, out, in Portugal, out, 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 out in Portugal, different conditions. Yeah. So and um, and and also the the gym prep, the gym the gym work that they've been on doing on top of that, I think, has massively helped. So. You know, and I, and I think one of the things that we wanted to ensure this season was we wanted to try and reduce the number of injuries we yeah. had we had compared to last year. I know we picked up a couple of early doors already, but I think in whole, I think in, I think by the end of it, hopefully we should see that the, our number of injuries this season we're anticipating would, should be less than what we've had last season. Well, I hope so. <laughs> I, <laughs> I hope so too. Well, Keith, so, yeah. thank you for joining us today. No it's been brilliant. Thank, thank you very much. much. And I'm sure we'll catch you about some time in the season. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. Thank you. And now that brings an end to this week's episode of The O Show. Thank you for joining us. And also a massive thank you to Keetan, Miles and Josh for joining us today. And we now look forward to Saturday's trip to Halifax. If you see me about, come grab me and we'll get you on the Instagram story for the day. Look forward to seeing you there. Up the O's.